So I headed across Murray Lake. Somewhere in here, so what we're looking at here is a crown land. Somewhere in here, Paul during the summer, and we've used it a few times in past winters, has set up a um, sort of a little camp area with a, a log and some prep firewood and stuff. I think it's somewhere in there, but I'm not sure. I guess we shall find out. Okay, so I think we're headed in here. Uh, snow showing across the lake. Probably nobody, other than a squirrel or two, has been here since midsummer. Last time Paul was up here. So let's see what we can see. Paul's not with me on this little excursion. He's uh, taking it easy back at the cottage. So this will be sort of his first time seeing it uh, in the winter. I don't think he actually came out here last winter. I've just fallen knee deep in snow. <clears throat> Hip deep in snow. <sighs> Be nicer if I had a walking stick. Okay, this is the place. So, somewhere under here are, I believe, two logs that Paul had set up for sitting. And I believe when we were here a oh, winter or two ago when we were camping, fire pit was there and we had set up our camp sort of where the forest opens up down in there. And here's where I just came from. A little bit steep in my uh, Snowshoe crampon things are a little bit full of ice from having stepped in some slush as I was coming across the lake. Anyways, I'll uh, dig things out a little bit, make it kind of nicer. Paul will probably join me tomorrow out here, so we'll have a ready-made uh, lunch spot. I'm going to probably spend the next few hours myself here and have lunch and maybe take a tromp up to the... Uh, the king tree or at least the beaver pond before it and explore a bit. Okay, so I dug around a fair bit. Um, probably should have brought a shovel. I was just using one of my snowshoes. And I'm nowhere near the ground. There's at least another foot below me, probably more. As you can see that, that bench there was well, completely covered. Um, and I'm not gonna dig all the way down to the ground. I also can't find the, uh, the cache of wood. Paul had mentioned it was to the, the right of these logs, which is sort of where I'm looking right now. And I, I don't, I'm not finding it, and it's getting a bit tough to dig with the snowshoes, so I don't really need much of a, a big fire now anyways. I'm just going to tromp around a bit and then just cook up, uh, do a small boil up. So I'll either use my, uh, my wood stove, um, my gasification stove um, that I built, or... What I'm actually thinking, maybe I'll uh, wander around and find some standing dead stuff, and uh, there's just tons of woods around here. And maybe uh, do a, a stick version of a Swedish fire torch and, uh, and do the boil up on top of that. I haven't done a stick version before, so it would be a good time to experiment with that. So anyways, that's the plan. going to explore a little bit, find some wood as I go and uh, then have a boil up in a little while. You hear all that? Almost nothing can be heard. It's really nice. Very quiet, very soft snow flutter coming down, but it's mostly mostly blue up there with just the, the occasional little flurry cloud coming in over the hills. It's a gorgeous day so far. Okay, so I've just finished tromping around a little bit, basically just looking for firewood. Um, there's a nice little creek that flows back there. Lots of uh, birch, dead and alive, um, kind of along the, the, the creek bed as it flows up into the hills. And uh, lots of uh, bracket fungus and uh, birch polyspore and stuff like that. So, Andrew, you're missing out. 
She loves collecting that stuff. Haven't seen any chaga at all around here yet, but we'll keep an eye open. Anyways, uh, for the Swedish fire tart, so I've gathered a bunch of standing dead stuff, and the plan is I'm gonna hack these guys into you know maybe two foot lengths thereabouts, and uh, kind of drive them into the into the snow in in a fairly tight bundle vertically so that they'll be standing up a foot or two out of out of the snow base and fall you know forming a rough cylinder kind of like a log standing on end um, and the idea is I'll use a hatchet or something to pound the tops down so that they they form an even base so I can rest my my pot on them so essentially just like a saw cut log standing on end is the effect that I want to achieve and the way this works is uh, all these sticks will have lots of air gaps in between them and in those gaps I'll put a bunch of small stuff and some birch bark and basically the, the fire will burn sort of uh, drawing air in from the sides of the bundle and uh, ch chimneying that, that air up through the top and once it gets going, which doesn't take too long um, you basically you just sit your pot right on top of the thing so you don't need to you know hang hang your pot or have a grate or be worried about it sinking down into into the the snow because we're going to be elevated from the snow by you know a foot or two okay so here's the plan so I've got my bundle of sticks here uh, all driven down into the ground some deeper than others so more or less leveled off on the top you can see we got a bunch of birch bark squashed in there and a bunch of little sticks. And what I'm going to do is use the uh, uh, steel and flint, get a bit of that jute tinder going. Um, that will then go up on top of here and um, you know, get a fire going on top, uh, throwing a bunch of the little guys in there. So the idea is. Um, once the fire gets going on top, it will uh, the coals and stuff will sort of fall down into the gaps, uh, into the gaps in here, and air will be drawn through all these openings along the sides of the sticks and, and up upwards. So hopefully that will work out. The pot will then just sit literally right on top here, and uh, we'll get our lunch going. We'll see how it works out. Okay, so it's literally been two minutes later. I've just got the, uh, the tops going. It's going to look a bit messy falling down on the ground and stuff, but I don't really care about that. What I'm interested in is the stuff that's falling down on the inside. I really only need the top part staying on top just long enough really to, to get a base of coals going uh, down onto the inside of things. Once that happens, it basically should be self, uh, self propagating. And, and from that point, I can, uh, I can get my, uh, my lunch going. Okay, so we're back again. So this has been, oh, I don't know, like five or six minutes. And it's basically just uh, now burning down from, from the center. That's the pot. Sort of sitting there. Didn't do a perfect job leveling it out, but certainly good enough. And I mean, if it was a, a problem, then I'd just you know, hang, it from the, hang it from the wire bale. Okay, so it's been uh, maybe 20 minutes. Probably half an hour since we first lit the, uh, lit the fire. Um, noodles boiled up and Honestly, once the pot was on there, probably three minutes, maximum four minutes. It was it was actually uh, boiling by by the time I ended the last video. I just didn't notice that it. it had been boiling for a little while already. Um, so that was pretty good. Um, basically, I just said uh, the last video segment. I just ended ended that clip, took it off, and uh, let it cool a bit. Started eating. Um, more or less, I haven't done anything to the fire other than a few of these guys that have tipped over. I just uh, straightened back up, and that's it. Fire's just been going along. You can see by the, the ice uh, 
no formation around it, but uh, kicking off quite a bit of heat. This kielbasa won't take too long to, uh, to heat up either. Okay, so that's there, the end of the fire. So basically, uh, after it had burned down and I was done eating and all that, I just uh, pulled out the, the the buried ends of whatever pieces were remaining and just rubbed snow on everything, made sure everything is out. And that's about it. So snowshoes go on next, then backpack. And um, I'm going to walk out, I guess, out onto the lake and take a compass bearing of... Uh, what we've come to call the king tree, which is basically a white pine that's uh, somewhere out in that direction that stands head and shoulders above everything else. You know, so when you look on the, the high ridges, all you see, you know, all the normal trees and then the crown of this really nice old, uh, old growth white pine that we hiked up to a couple of years ago. And, uh, so I don't know, maybe I'll take a compass bearing and see if I can walk up and find them again and uh, then wander back to to the cottage in time for um, dinner or before uh, night settles. Okay, so there in the distance is the king tree. So, uh, from Hembury Lake, I've uh, climbed up quite a, a steep ridge through <laughs> almost waist deep snow at times. Even with the snowshoes, it was a real slog to get to the top of the ridge. Uh, I'm just descending now, uh, about to descend to a, into a sort of a beaver pond, and then we'll clomp uh, right back up onto the top of the next ridge, and uh, hopefully. If, we nav if the navigation works out well, there's the beaver pond down there. If the navigation works out well, we'll uh, be within... The last time we did it, we were probably within 100 feet of the tree when we got up to the top of that ridge. Um, so, we'll give it a shot again. There's a really impressive uh, beaver dam at the, the end of this lake, just off... or at the end of this pond, just to the left here. It's got to be 20 feet high. Or at least it was a couple of years ago when we were by. Uh, Maybe I'll take a walk past that around and then up to the tree. Anyways, we've got some snow moving in. And I probably only have maybe an hour at most of walking in this direction until I have to turn around. Otherwise I'll otherwise I'll be uh, risking coming back at night. It's not a bad thing if I'm at the edge of the, the lake at that point. But if I'm still in the bush, I don't want to be walking around at night. Yeah, so I don't know. I, you know, I am going to time things so that doesn't happen. But even if by some weird eventuality that did happen, I, I'd be perfectly fine spending the night. Got a a tarp and some warm, extra warm clothes and one of those emergency blanket things, and basically just get a fire going, hunker down, and, uh, and then trot along in the morning. But anyways, that's not going to happen. Heading off to the tree. Okay, we're getting very, very close now. There's the king tree. And uh, the navigation is quite nice. Like, you know, as soon as we're into the, into the bush and stuff, we can't see this. So we basically got a compass bearing, um, you know, sighting on an object 50, 100 feet forward, moving up to it, then sighting on the next one and progressing forward. Um, and we're basically bang on. I had to make absolutely zero lateral adjustment when I came over this last bit of uh, uh, ridge that's behind me. You know, there, there he was, exactly where I was headed. <laughs> Quite happy about that. Uh, there's a trail down. Well, not trail. There's my trail down through the uh, through the bush, and basically a fairly straight line down there will get us to back to the beaver pond. Then a bit of a jog to the right and left, up a ridge, down a ridge, we get us onto the lake, and from there, basically, I'm probably pointing the camera directly out at where uh, Paul's cottage is, another kilometer, I guess, or something like that across the lake. So, probably all in all, less than three or four kilometers in one direction, but 
with the amount of snow cover it's uh, been quite a workout to, to move around but I'm quite happy about it I haven't been up here in two or three years uh, up to the this bridge up to the tree so looking forward to uh, give the old girl a hug <laughs> and here we are Mr. King Tree looking up way up <laughs> Somewhere up there is the top of the canopy. Oh, I guess we're so tight underneath this thing, we'll never see the top of it from here. But it's quite a good size. Oh. So I've got my hand on one side, we'll see if I can reach. Oh, around there, probably get, so I've got about a six foot wingspan and I'm probably getting about halfway around the tree maybe a wee bit over half so maybe guessing a 12 foot circumference 10 to 12 foot, foot circumference you can really hear the wind up at the top of this ridge the occasional distant uh, snowmobile type. It's kind of why I like snowshoeing though, you know, like the only thing to break down is me, I guess. And I can't imagine a snowmobile being able to get up into places like this. It's just, I guess, a slower pace, uh, quieter way of doing things. Okay, well, I guess I'll wander around the tree a bit and start to make tracks uh, back the way I came.